Hey, welcome to the 40 Finance channel, everybody. Today we're talking QQQ, and we've gotten through the majority of the top 100 NASDAQ stocks in terms of earnings calls this season. And I think when you compare the results so far to the kind of bearish viewpoint that we had certainly in December and very early January, you know, it hasn't been as bad as many of the bears have expected it to be. Of course, you know, every day is a new day and there's always variables that are changing in the market. But the goal here today is to take a pulse of the QQQ as it stands today. Now, as always, we're going to be using Seeking Alpha for our metrics. And you see I'm on my QQQ Holdings portfolio. This is one that I, I sort of just built out by hand. It gives me an opportunity to track the components of the QQQ at a more granular level. And as we're going through today, if you're interested in learning more about Seeking Alpha Premium, my affiliate link is in the description. It gives you a phenomenal discount, $99 for an entire year, 12 full months for $99. You also get a free trial on the front end before your credit card is charged. So check that out below, potentially support my channel as well. Now what I've done here, and I'm on this uh, earnings tab in this portfolio I created, and just sorted by the upcoming announcements. And we've got NVIDIA, Intuit, Costco, Broadcom, and Adobe. And of those names, you know, NVIDIA is a top holding for the QQQ. So the, the QQQ is a market cap weighted fund, if you're not familiar. Yes, it does have 100 stocks in it, the top 100 stocks in the NASDAQ, but it's market cap weighted. So for example, Apple sits at the top at about 12%, uh, and NVIDIA is a top 10 holding, whereas uh, some of these other ones, Costco and AVGO, they're probably top 15 off the top of my head, but then Intuit and Adobe, I think, are gonna come in a little bit lower. Okay, so as of today, we've got a price of 301 on the Qs. Now, let's take a look at some of our momentum in terms of price. And you see I'm on this momentum tab in Seeking Alpha. I'm gonna scroll down here to the price performance. And year to date, right? Year to date, you're plus 13% on the QQQ. So if you figure 10% of 300 is 30, uh, then you know you've got maybe $35, $40 price appreciation on this one uh, since the beginning of the year. So plus 13%, you're doubling up on the S&P 500 so far this year. Um, if you go total return, which includes a small dividend on the Qs, 13% to 6.5% for the S&P. So overall, in the first 50-ish days, it's been a good start. However, when you compare some of that to, say, the last one year, which despite this run-up, the past year is still down 13%. There's plenty of more ground to go to catch up for some of the negativity that we had last year. Now, the big event that we were all sort of waiting for, if you were rooting for the Qs, uh, was in the moving averages this year. And it was talked about a lot last year, but really trying to wait for that 200 day moving average for the price to get above that. And it took a long time, much longer than I thought it was going to take. But that milestone occurred most recently, uh, I guess January 25th or so. Now to get back below that price, if you wanted to have a bearish view, uh, you need to get under $291. So you got about a $10 spread in there from where we are today to crossing back into the negative land of the 200-day moving average. Now, in terms of RSI, which I also follow, you know, the last good RSI entry point uh, looks to have been late December. You were in the 30s, sort of on a downward uh, trajectory there. And then it's been, you know, big surprise. It's been up mostly this year, and you're currently sitting at an RSI of 55. Okay, so the QQQ as a whole has surpassed its 200-day moving average. Now let's look at the components a little bit and see how they are doing compared to the 200-day average. And for this list, I've sorted by market cap, so it really does feature uh, the core strength of the QQQ. And if we start off with Apple, which is the, you know, the highest holding, 
um, your three and a half percent over your 200 day simple moving average. Microsoft's above about 2%. But then when we see Google, Amazon, and Tesla, they have trended below the 200 day moving average. So that could be a concern uh, in terms of the QQQ as a whole and which direction it's heading. Um, on the bright side, and we'll have to see how long it sticks, you've got NVIDIA 31% over its 200 day, Meta 14, Broadcom 13. Interestingly, that those two stocks are reporting uh, over the next few days. So we'll see if they can hang on to that number. Pepsi, 1.75%. Costco, 2.34%. There's another one that we'll be reporting here soon. Then you have Cisco that had a good report. They're 11% over their 200-day moving average. So if I go in order of market cap and I just say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, if we stop here, we have three stocks that are below their 200-day average, but we have seven that are above. Now, out of those seven, you've got NVIDIA that's about to report and Broadcom. So really the lay of the land in terms of which side are we going to be heavier on in the top components, it's going to boil down to this week. So for me as a QQQ bull, you know, I'm definitely rooting for Broadcom and NVIDIA this week. Uh, to maintain their standing above their 200-day moving average. And that will just, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, that should keep the Qs above their 200-day as well. Now, from a fundamental standpoint, looking at the EPS growth of the top companies, the margins are a lot slimmer. Uh, however, that doesn't surprise me here in the first, you know, really the first six months of the year because bearish sentiment was so strong in December. The, the question for me is really where do we land at the end of the year? I'm obviously betting on things to get better, uh, certainly as we progress towards warmer weather and then uh, ending the year in the holiday season. But right now, from a PE standpoint, this is trailing 12 months and forward PE. You know, the margin on Apple between the two, in a perfect world, you'd want your forward PE to be coming down uh, from your trailing 12 months, right? Your earnings are growing, uh, so the PE would come down on the same multiple. Well, here you've got basically flat on Apple. Uh, you look at Microsoft, it's essentially the same thing. Google, you know, a couple points in there, it could go from 20 to 18 if their EPS numbers come in, but it's a stretch. Amazon's EPS has been a mess for the past two and a half years uh, due to capital expenditures, COVID, all the things. They've gotten way off track of EPS growth. If there's a bright side in here, it's that they're showing an EPS, at least on the forward uh, view at 64, it's going to take them a little bit to, uh, to develop a consistent track record of EPS growth again. Hopefully, they're getting started this year. Tesla, not a lot here uh, in terms of EPS growth and how that affects PE. Now, NVIDIA, potential bright spot. X Factor, though, they haven't reported yet. So these numbers can change. Uh, Meta, making some progress on a couple points. Broadcom looks really good, hasn't reported yet. So we don't know for sure. These are still projection numbers based off the last earnings call. Uh, Costco about flat, Pepsi three points lower. So EPS growth wise, you know, we're still working with very slim margins here. And, and it doesn't surprise me. However, it will be important if the QQQ is gonna break out substantially more from where it is today, we are going to need to see some EPS growth, uh, more EPS growth than is represented here as the year goes on. I think that happens, but let's be fair, it's a fork in the road, and it wouldn't take a whole lot of changes uh, to some of the current pain points that we have for the EPS to be flat or, you know, God forbid, less EPS than the year before for some of these stocks. All right, quick peek at revenue growth, year over year versus forward projections. 
Apple, you want this number to be higher, right? You want more growth this year than they had last year. Not by much at Apple, but don't forget they make a kajillion dollars, so it's not super easy to move the needle here. I'll take plus, point, uh, plus 4.5% uh, for Apple all day. Microsoft still hanging double digits after earnings, so that's a good thing. Google, uh, they're gonna come in right about flat. Uh, in terms of their revenue growth per year. Uh, hopefully they can increase their forecast uh, and get this over the hump a little bit. Amazon, roughly flat. Tesla, going from 51% revenue growth to 35%, at least projected. We'll have to see what happens. That's not a huge surprise with Tesla because the company's getting bigger. And every time you have 50% revenue growth, you know you just can't do that every single year for five or six years straight, you, have, you eventually reach uh, uh, such big numbers that it's impossible for anybody. NVIDIA hasn't reported yet. You've got revenue growth that would exceed the year before. Meta, same thing, plus 5%. Broadcom, actually going down, still growing, but going down. And Pepsi and Costco in the same boat. All right, so bottom line for me on the QQQ here, just a few days before NVIDIA reports, um, you know, I feel good about the $300 price right now. As far as blowing away $300 and going up another 10%, um, it's, it feels to me like that would probably take a while. And when I say take a while, I mean in terms of earnings to catch up from a fundamental valuation view. What could happen, on either side of the coin is to have a huge catalyst, positive or negative, that would change the scope of how we're looking at projections, both on the EPS line and the revenue line. That obviously would be good news for the entire stock market. As it stands for me, I have about 60 shares of QQQ right now. My goal remains uh, to get to 100, okay? So I got about uh, $12,000 or so left of purchases I need to do to get to that that's not going to happen overnight, uh, so I will continue to buy roughly every week, um, and I will also be adding to TQQQ because I think on the broad set of information that we have here right now, I do feel good that by January 1st of next year uh, that many of the problems we have today will be in a better place, and we've already kind of seen that. We don't know exactly when the interest rate uh, hype is going to end, but it definitely feels like we're climbing uh, very near the top of that peak. Now, from where I sit, I will continue to build my QQQ positions, whether things go up or down. In fact, if they go down, I probably would build faster uh, than if they go up. But no matter which way it goes, the Qs uh, represent the 100 companies that I think are going to make the most waves in the future. So it's an easy investment for me, particularly when you think about a three to five year stretch, uh, if not longer. And that's what makes this such an easy one to buy into. All right, guys, before you go, don't forget to check out that special Seeking Alpha offer in the description. Hope everybody's doing great. We'll see you on the next video.